And again, welcome everyone to our webinar today on reducing risk and improving security in the data center. We are recording this session and we'll send out the recording at the um, in the next day or so and handling Q&A at the end of the session. So be sure and type in your questions during the session and we'll get to as many as we can. With that, I'd like to hand this over to, to Mike Schmidt. Mike, are you there? Great, Karen, thank you very much. And thank you to everybody who's joined us today. Um, I'm excited to go over some things about how Enlight can help reduce the risk and improve security, uh, not just in the data center, but across the entire compute infrastructure. Uh, next. So my name is Mike Schmidt. I'm the Senior Director of Marketing here at Enlight. Today I'm joined with Anthony Vincinelli, who is the Technology Director for us. Also previously, he was at Application Security, Inc., uh, which gives him a great pedigree to be participating in today's conversation. Really kind of the focus is the compute infrastructure, data center, edge computing, your colo locations are really the backbone of, of, of any business or organization. Yet they're constantly at risk from outages and hacks. A bigger problem is that companies just don't have full visibility across the infrastructure and don't have the ability to control what they don't know they have. Next. I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Enlight, uh, just so we get um, who we are for those of you that aren't familiar. And for the rest of the session, Tony will be taking us through on um, his conversation. So Enlight is a leader in data center infrastructure management. Uh, we have committed to focus ourselves to help automate um, the entire infrastructure of the data center and the compute infrastructure uh, to allow for automation, visibility, and transparency of everything from the uh, power inlet to the asset utilization and reporting into business systems. We cover everything from literally the dock to decommissioning of assets um, within the infrastructure and tying into multiple business systems, whether they be uh, CMDBs, uh, your ITMS systems, and even other business intelligence systems. Next. Enlight is, is proud to support hundreds of customers across the globe. Um, we have some of the, the largest, uh, you know, Fortune 500 companies um, um, that we do business with in everywhere from small um, data centers to, you know, multinational, you know, uh, tens of thousands of racks and, and assets under our control. Enlight has always been singly focused on doing this for our customers. Uh, we, we, we haven't diversified into other aspects of uh, the IT infrastructure. We focus entirely on um, creating a perfect visibility of the data center. And as such, we've got a pretty cool record of about 98% retention rate um, of all of our customers over um, you know a, a 14 year period of time. Next. So Enlight supports four primary products. We have Enlight Asset Optimizer, we have Enlight Energy Optimizer, we have Enlight System Utilization Monitor, and we have our Discovery application. Discovery application and the Enlight Asset Optimizer will really be kind of the um, underpin of what we will be talking about today. Um, these products, as, as I've mentioned, really help to give you a visualization of what is in your infrastructure, what's going on in your infrastructure, um, and helping you identify um, opportunities and potential problems. It allows you to manage uh, through automation of workflow um, and other uh, redundant activities and provides a comprehensive database to allow interaction with other systems to create reporting, not just at an IT level, but at a business level. 
Next. So humans are the greatest risk, right? Uh, whether, whether it's intentional or unintentional. Um, Tony, you, you've had a lot of experience with this. Why don't you share, you know, your thoughts on this? Yeah, absolutely, Mike. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, unfortunately, humans are the greatest risk. We we are trying to uh, to capture so many things, so many moves, ads, and changes um, uh, throughout the data center. Uh, we have uh, undocumented equipment. We have changes that are being made. Uh, uh, unauthorized, again, undocumented uh, in, inside of the data center. And we're trying to gr get our arms around this problem. And the, the challenge is the environment continues to get more complex. As we're looking at, um, at our data centers, they're becoming more virtualized. They're becoming a more of a hybrid solution where certain things will live in the cloud, certain uh, uh, services are moved to the cloud. There's uh, compute in the cloud, storage on premises. There's a lot of different um, of things that we're trying to get our hands around. Increased changes uh, uh, and increased access into the data center uh, add to the risk that, um, uh, that, that, we're, that we're presented with. Uh, so being able to understand uh, and be able to communicate to the entire organization uh, what assets we have, uh, where they are physically, where they are in the data center, uh, where they are in their position in their life cycle is also important to understand. Is this asset living here today in our data center? Is it on its way to the data center? Should it be decommissioned and, and moved out of the data center to get to get our arms around that uh, we're presented with a lot of challenges um, uh, one uh, you know notwithstanding the uh, you know the lack of resources right that the, the we're all stretched very thin with being able to try to um, uh, manage more and more uh, assets of um, with more and more complexity with less people with less resources um, and so that's where uh, data center uh, infrastructure management steps in and tries to help with this and automate uh, some of this process and give us one place to look uh, to try to understand the problem so the main vectors of of attack here the main vectors for um, um, of risk uh, that exists in the data center surround these three aspects. So the, the physical computer infrastructure, we have power and cooling issues that we have to understand. Asset vulnerabilities, as well as unplanned changes, uh, changes that, uh, that were made undocumented or outside of some process. And to understand whether those changes were some mistake or perhaps even in, in nefarious in nature. Uh, so these are the three things that we're going to try to concentrate on today, um, and and show you how Enlight can can help you with uh, understanding each of these and reducing your risk profile, reducing your risk surface area by um, by understanding each of these three three aspects better. So first, we'll look at power and cooling issues. So first, you know, if we look at how we're doing these things today, how we're trying to understand something as complex as the data center, a lot of this is done manually today. And so to have a, a, a dynamic and integrated uh, approach with, with bringing in as much real-time information as possible, looking at the telemetry that exists in our data center to understand um, where the power draws are in our cabinets, uh, where um, how our power chains are distributed so that we have effective, uh, diverse power to our critical assets and what a failover might look like. Um, can we fail over effectively? Do we understand where um, the risk might exist if we do maintenance or there's some outage in a part of the data center? What, which assets are affected by that outage? certain areas of the data center may be more resilient than the others. And so that resiliency, we should understand and place our most critical assets in those most resilient areas. Uh, right now, we're sort of 
you know, that this could be a, this can be a challenge as far as capacity planning is concerned and where we should put assets. A lot of times it's, well, where do we have room right? more than where is the least risky place to put a critical asset? And so manually, we just don't have this visibility today. Manually, we, we, we're doing the best that we can, but, but we don't have this visibility. So a modern approach to this, the way that we want to, to try to approach this is by marrying the information that we can get from our facility and understanding that fully on the IT side of things as well. So as we're uh, moving IT assets into the facility, it's not, you know, it's not good enough to just say, oh, we have an outlet available that has enough power for you. But is that outlet the right outlet for, uh, uh, for the, the, the uptime that we need for, say, a critical asset? And so we have a few preventative measures that can be taken for uh, reducing the power and cooling outage risks, right? So preventative being, let's simulate failures. Let's see how the power chain would react based off of, well, what if we lost this PDU? What if we lost this panel or this RPP? How would we be affected downstream? How would failover occur? And so this helps us with, um, Nlight helps us in this way with being able to do a full simulation of these outage events to say, well, what if we had multiple failures and how would our power chain react? It does this by gathering real-time information all along the power chain and essentially doing the math, right? To do the math that says, well, if I if this load is now uh, not fully supported here and it's moved to this side of the power chain, how is it affected? Um, can we actually support that? And if you can't, what are the what what is the um, what are the downstream effects? How do we understand uh, you know the cabinets that are affected, the assets inside of those cabinets, and the applications that may live on those assets? That's really the full thread and the full story that Enlight enables you to tell is be able to understand, uh, you know, the 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 known critical assets, whether they are uh, servers, ra rack, racked servers, whether they're blade servers, whether they're virtual servers that live on those blades. That these are things that that can help with that that, that can be done up front preventatively to say let's let's reduce and understand our the risk that we have available or, or that's a uh, we're exposed to across these assets. Uh, from a proactive standpoint, we can look and monitor the real-time power. We can uh, understand where our peak loads are. We can understand where our hottest areas of the data center are. We can look and 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 understand from a from a seasonal perspective how temperatures, hot spots, cold spots. Uh, come and go in the data center throughout the seasons, right? So by, by looking at a heat map, we can see, oh, this area gets, you know, gets really warm in the summertime, and we should be, um, we should be prepared for that. Any alarms that then could be set off to uh, warn us before things get to a critical area uh, um, uh, would be help, will be helpful as, as well, right? So those those preemptive or escalating alarms that could say, well, you know what, you're getting into a very risky area here as far as uh, right now the draw in these cabinets or the temperature in this row is reaching an area where you need to respond. You need to bring some more cooling into that area or we need to uh, 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 reduce the heat or reduce the draw on those cabinets uh, uh, before things get before things to get too, uh, get too bad. As we look at, you know, the second part of this, it's, you know, asset vulnerabilities. Being able to get a full, your, your arms around where everything is and the, and the, and the posture of where the, uh, of those things once we find them. So to be able to proactively discover um, assets all across the network and be able to uh, reconcile that with your documentation. In this case, Enlight would be your documentation, right? It would, you would have a, a representative set of where you believe all of your managed assets are. Uh, discovery can come through and and um, validate that for you, as well as maybe find the outliers, find the things that have not been documented, uh, or the things that uh, have been documented but then have been removed in the real world, right? That they may not have been updated. So having this this one place where we can see all of our assets 
um, is 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 a must. Um, and there are several regulations that have now been placed um, that have been put forth that uh, say that you must do this, right? You must have uh, a, an accurate inventory of all of your critical assets. Uh, the data center act, you know, falls into a uh, in, into critical infrastructure, right? The data centers that are owned by or owned and operated by the government fall under that critical infrastructure definition. Uh, so we want to make sure we understand that. We also want to understand those assets and what their posture is, whether they have outdated software or firmware on them uh, is, is important. So without having that updated firmware or firmware that might have known vulnerabilities, we open ourselves to a vector of attack. Uh, whether that is a, through a mistake or whether that's through an, a true attack, um, uh, we wanna make sure we try to close those loops or at least understand uh, where that risk is. Um, and so then that, that allows us to, uh, you know, understand that, that difference and, and be able to prioritize where we can patch. Um, you know, proactively, we want to start to, to, um, to make a, and understand our process better and weave that process into how we do our everyday work, making sure that the documentation is not an afterthought. The documentation of a change is not outside of some process or it happened somewhere else or, you know, I'll, I'll write that down and, and get back to it. The documentation is how we how we work every day. And, and, and Nlight allows you to bring that, um, extends that to the user so that you can just update, make your moves and changes and make presents you with the asset that you're changing, bringing you as close to the asset as possible to be able to document that change whether it's I'm updating the use space, I'm updating the position of this uh, server from, you know, it's, it was in staging and now it's in production. Maybe it's a, it's a connection to a network port that I need to update to make sure that I have um, a full understanding of that uh, is, is a must. And Enlight can help you weave that into your existing change management process through integrations that we have with uh, with change management tools like uh, ServiceNow, Remedy, uh, HP Service Manager, the, uh, those types of things are um, uh, built-in integrations that we already have to weave that into your current uh, change management process. So change can continue to occur from uh, where you uh, where you wish it to, but then extends into the data center, the things that are happening on the floor to make sure that that uh, that our documentation that's done manually is uh, is kept up to date. Discovery can come through and then reconcile and make sure that we're capturing all of that. We wanna reduce these unplanned changes, right? We wanna make sure that, uh, that we have, you know, what we call asset integrity monitoring that is through that through that scanning, through that discovery, that we're constantly, we constantly have a, a regular scan that's going through and making sure that we can see any changes in those assets. Uh, and we want to reconcile, make sure that we're making, uh, uh, capturing those changes um, inside of, of Enlight. And then because Enlight has an audit trail for every asset, we can monitor any sort of unauthorized changes that, that are occurring. So if somebody goes into the back end database or somebody goes in and makes a change outside of the process that we've defined, Enlight's audit trail for every asset has a timestamp of when that change was made, who made it, um, uh, what the original value was, what the new value is. There's also a transaction ID associated with that so you would understand if the change came from the Enlight user interface or if it came outside of that from say the back end database. So we want to consistently and constantly monitor uh, the network for these these unplanned changes. So we have a you know a, a risk accountability checklist here that that will help us sort of understand um, you know some of the things that we need to make sure that we're doing to to um, to secure our data centers. To make sure that we understand the risk that that we're exposed to, that that's the, those two things. You know, making sure that you're proactively uh, um, uh, addressing each of these is important. But just to have an understanding of your risk is is part of the process as well. 
So we're going to continue to do this through uh, making sure we have a complete IT uh, hardware inventory. And we want to make sure that we're uh, managing this, uh, the, these, um, the, managing these, uh, these assets through a process um, and, and that we have a plan for um, any contingencies, right? Anything that we might not be able to uh, bring into the fold or we, un we want to make sure that we understand that risk fully to, uh, to plan for contingencies. You'll see a couple things here as far as standards, uh, uh, HIPAA and DCOI. These have been extended, um, or, or I should say defined for us uh, through NIST framework, through the Data Center Optimization Initiative uh, that's being uh, put forth by the uh, Office, of, uh, Office of Management and Budget that, that, um, that are defining exactly what optimization means exactly what you need to do from a, a risks framework to secure your data centers so um, something like uh, 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 something like the data center optimization initiative while it is uh, needs to be enforced by government agencies it does have a lot of valuable things that commercial industry can use as well uh, as a guideline a place to start Right. It might not be an enforceable thing, but it gives a great guideline and a great best practice for are my data centers optimized and and um, and how can I use some of the existing frameworks to reduce risk? Those things are already defined. Um, and so um, by following things like um, the NIST uh, uh, cybersecurity framework and data center optimization initiative, both of those things, you need to understand where your assets are. Right. Both of those things, both NIST and DCOI define you need to have an accurate inventory. You need to um, start to uh, get rid of um, underutilized or uh, un unused servers. Right. Those are those are uh, vectors for uh, ve vectors for attacks, servers that are unmanaged out there. Um, and so that we th those are addressed by the government, but can be used as best practice for everyone. So just in summary here, the, you know, Enlight is um, is has several ways to help you reduce the risk and better understand uh, the the full picture of your data center. Um, the days of of managing this information through spreadsheets, unfortunately, now the problem has become so large and so complex that we just cannot keep up with the change. And so every time we go to uh, refer to our spreadsheets and ask them the questions that we need uh, answers to very quickly. Uh, we 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 can't lean on them with confidence because we know that they're not up to date. We know they're not accurate. They just um, and they can't give us the resolution back that we need. We need to understand all the relationships between assets, how they're connected to networks, how they're connected to power, and related to one another to be able to fully understand uh, the risk that we're exposed to. So looking at a source of truth for all of the assets uh, like uh, Enlight uh, 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 Data Center Infrastructure Management will, will help us do that. And being able to go out and alert people to take action and bring that action into a change management process or an incident response process um, is essential. So I think yeah, we have just a little... Thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Yeah, oh, go, yeah. go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Yes, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we do have a little bit of time, and there's been a lot of interest. Um, so um, in the time that we have left, uh, we will try and close this up at the bottom uh, of the hour. I will we'll go through the questions that we can get to. Um, please continue to type your questions in. Um, those that we can't get to, we will follow up um, uh, individually with you and uh, make sure that all of your questions are, are resolved. Uh, first one is from Pradeep. Um, I am facing multiple government mandates, including DCOI, and continuous monitoring. How can Enlight help? Uh, yeah, so uh, DCOI, uh, specifically Enlight has a, a data center optimization initiative dashboard that you can look at all five metrics in one place. So the, all five of these metrics can be provided natively through Enlight. So uh, when you're looking at Enlight uh, server utilization and monitoring, that gives you that server metric, that CPU utilization metric um, for unused servers. 
being able to get those under control and understand, you know, where some uh, some of those uh, zombie servers, as people say, or orphan servers that that are not no longer managed, that are producing producing heat and using power, but aren't used anymore. Uh, we want to try to get rid of those. Also, because they're not being managed, they may not be uh, you know be included in in our patch management either. And so we want to get rid of those as soon as possible. The DCOI uh, metrics uh, tackle those things. So. Um, the CDM, so continuous diagnostics and monitoring that is put forth by Department of Homeland Security says that you need to, um, uh, that you need to secure your critical infrastructure at the data center is, uh, falls under that critical infrastructure definition. And so we need to have an accurate asset inventory uh, to do that. Um, Discovery provides that for uh, CDM uh, as a CDM requirement to actually go out, find those assets not only that they're on the network, but then a representation and an understanding of physically where are they in the world, right? So discovery tells us that it's out there, uh, data center infrastructure management visualization tells us where it is. And so, um, and, and, and so that gives us that full picture of uh, um, that, that the DHS is requiring. And incidentally, NLight is now included on the DHS CDM uh, list, right? The approved products list that 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 is put forth. So you can actually um, uh, fulfill one of those CDM mandates uh, with with uh, uh, by using Enlight. Um, it looks like we have time for one more question. This came in from Sandy. Can you explain more about how your discovery um, product attaches to the network, um, discovers things. I'm sorry. Uh, in the network, and do they have to be in my ECIM or my CMDB to be discovered? Yeah, no, good question. The, the Nlight's uh, discovery is an agentless discovery, uh, so it actually goes out and scans across the network. You can actually make that as wide or as narrow as you wish, and you do not have to have those assets already existing in the CMDB or in a, a data center infrastructure management uh, tool. Um, before you do that discovery, that that's that's the um, so you can actually go out and start to populate your DCIM uh, with with discovery. Um, so you so you do not need either of those things to go out and do an accurate inventory. Uh, it's an agentless scan uh, that can go out that you can tailor to be as as I mentioned as wide or as narrow as you wish or as focused on particular assets uh, as you'd like um, and. Um, uh, we we would be happy to do a detailed product uh, a demonstration for anybody interested in and like discovery. We can really get down into the nuts and bolts uh, of how uh, of how uh, discovery works. Uh, but it's been really helpful for for people that have maybe a data set that they're not um, uh, either you know they don't trust fully it, so they can use that as a, you can use discovery as a reconciliation or you can use it as let me go find everything out there um, and use that to get started. Um, either one of those are possible. Great. Um, I, I want to commit to everybody that we will follow up on the rest of your questions. Uh, um, in the meantime, if you uh, have any questions or want to learn more, please visit us at nlight.com or send us an email at info at uh, This ends our webinar today. Thank you.